Hey, this is Jason with Tech323, and today I'm going to show you how I set up my Zima Board 216 to run FreeDOS 1.3 so that I can use it to run SpinWrite to maintain and repair my hard drives and solid state drives. So the first thing you're going to want to do is grab a copy of FreeDOS. Uh, you can get that at FreeDOS.org. You want to download that. Go to the download section and in this case, I downloaded the full USB. Uh, you can also download the light USB. Uh, either way, you know, grab one of those, and then we're going to write that onto a thumb drive or boot uh, USB drive using Rufus. So I want to grab a copy of Rufus. Once you have these files downloaded, you will need to extract the IMG file from the zip file. So we're going to open up the FreeDOS zip file, grab the IMG file inside there, and I'm going to drag it out into my downloads folder and let it copy it into this folder. Uh, we're going to burn this IMG file to a USB drive using Rufus. So we're going to go ahead and launch Rufus. Next, we will use Rufus to burn the IMG file that we downloaded earlier and extracted to our USB boot device. Uh, under the device set section you want to pick the drive that you want to copy the data to. Be sure you pick the right one. Uh, it will destroy and erase all data on that drive. Uh, we're going to click it select and we're going to go into our download section and pick the IMG file that we just extracted and hit open. The rest of these are going to be set by default. We really can't change those. And we're going to go ahead and hit start and let that uh, write. It will give you the warning that it's going to erase all the data. You're going to go ahead and just click OK and we'll let that run. Okay, when that finishes, you should have all the data written to the drive. We're going to open up Explorer and if we'll look at the thumb drive, the E drive here, we'll see it created some folders and some files. Uh, at this point I'm going to go ahead and copy my SpinWrite and SpinWrite uh, read speed and then also the new Alpha 2 version of SpinWrite 6.1 onto my disk so that they're on there when I finish this. I'm also going to put a couple of old DOS utilities. Okay now that you've got your free DOS disk created you want to put it in the Zima board and power it on and after you power it on you want to hold down the F11 key and that'll bring up the boot device menu you want to go down until you see your USB drive uh, you want to pick the non UEFI version of your USB drive uh, mine is called general UDisk 5.0 yours will probably have a different name uh, but we're going to pick that we're going to hit enter and it's going to boot into FreeDOS um, as it's booting up you're going to see some error messages pop up you're just going to ignore those uh, those are because we don't have a CD-ROM and it's trying to load some CD drivers uh, first you're going to choose your language I'm going to choose English and you get to the welcome to the install splash screen um, you can choose to drop out to DOS now so if you need to just boot up to this and then maybe fix something because your system wouldn't boot you could hit uh, no return to DOS here and it would drop you out to a command prompt and you could uh, you know copy a file or edit a file whatever you need to do but in this case we're gonna hit yes to continue with the installation and the first thing we're gonna have to do is partition the drive so the Zima board comes pre-installed with Linux and it has a Linux partition on it uh, FreeDOS can't run on a Linux partition and so we have to use a program called FDisk to go in and remove the old partition, set up a new FAT32 partition, and then at that point we can go forward with formatting that partition and then installing FreeDOS. Uh, you want to choose yes here because we do want FAT32 support. Um, if you've never used FDisk, it can be a little scary at first, uh, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, Number four is probably the first thing you want to do is we'll choose a four here and just look at what partitions it sees. 
Uh, currently we're looking at disk number two at the top and it says one partition and it's a non-DOS partition. So that's your Linux partition that we're going to remove. Um, it should be about 15 gig. So you just make sure that you have the right disk there. Um, we're going to hit three to delete a partition. And then we're going to delete a non-DOS partition. So we're going to choose four. And then we see our partition there. And we're going to choose one to select the partition we want to delete. We're going to hit enter. And that partition has now been deleted. We're going to hit escape. We can hit four again just to display and double check that it did get deleted. And so there's no partitions defined. So now we're going to go into choose option one. And we're going to define a partition and create a DOS partition. We're going to create a primary partition. So we're going to choose one again. Do we want to use the maximum size available? In this case, we do. We're going to hit enter. And at this point, we have a partition created. It is not yet bootable because it's not active. Under status, you should see the letter A. So we're going to go ahead and go in and activate that partition. So we're going to hit escape. We're going to hit number two this time. We're going to set the partition active by going in here. We're going to choose the partition we want to activate. We're going to hit enter. And now we have an active primary DOS partition. It's FAT32. And we're going to hit escape. And escape to exit FDisk. And escape again. At this point, we have to reboot in order to um, get this to take effect. So I'm going to power off the Zima board and power it back on. Okay, after it's rebooted, it's going to come back up and ask you to select your language again. Uh, you didn't have to push F11 and choose your drive at that point because there are no other partitions to boot from. Uh, but if you did push F11, uh, you would have come in the same way. Um, either way, we're going to choose our language here. We're going to continue the install. It now sees that the drive is not formatted, so we're going to format the drive. Uh, it's calling it the D drive here. Don't get confused. Uh, right now, our USB drive is, is considered the C drive. This is a secondary drive, so it's seeing it as the D drive. When this finishes, um, our main drive in our Zima board will be the C drive. Okay, so the D drive is now formatted, and we're gonna hit enter to continue. So it's gathering some more information. We're gonna choose our default keyboard layout. In this case, it's English. Do you want to overwrite the master boot record uh, for that drive? We do. And this is where you choose which version of FreeDOS you want to install. I'm going to go ahead and install the full version. And it gives you a last chance to, to not do this. You can know and drop out to DOS, but we're going to go ahead and hit yes to continue. And we'll let this run. Okay, FreeDOS is now finished installing and it wants you to reboot. So you're going to hit enter to reboot. We're going to hold down the delete key because the first time we need to go in and make a few changes in the BIOS. So we're going to come into the main BIOS uh, window. We're going to use the arrow keys to navigate around. We're going to come over to the boot section. Uh, first thing is I don't want to see the Zima logo. Um, you can leave that on if you want to. We want to be sure that CSM support is enabled. On boot we want it to set be set to legacy only. We want to turn off UEI, UEFI here. We want to just have it set to enabled. And again, enabled here. Um, for my first boot option, I wanted to use the main disk inside the system. Um, I actually don't want it to d boot to any other device. So I'm going to just disable everything. Uh, and then down here under new boot policy, I'm going to set that to place last. So if we do put a no, new device in and it sees it a new bootable device, it won't put it ahead of our main MMC that's built into the Zima board. Um, at this point, it's going to boot up to the drive that's in the Zima board and ignore any other boot devices. So I'm going to go over to save and exit and choose save changes and exit. Okay, after we've got the BIOS set the way we want it, uh, we're going to let the system boot up for the first time. And it's going to come to a the FreeDOS little boot menu. And we're going to go down and choose option 5. And just load 
free DOS with no drivers, no high mem, no memory manager, nothing like that. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we're going to make option five our default. Uh, so we're going to edit the config sys. So the config sys uh, is actually fdconfig.sys. We're going to type in edit fdconfig.sys, hit enter. That's going to take us into the edit utility. We're going to go down to this uh, menu default and we're going to change that to a five comma five. So it's going to choose option five. It's going to wait five seconds before it goes forward. Um, hit Alt F X enter to close out and save, save those changes. And at this point, uh, we've got our spin right and everything already copied onto our thumb drive. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to copy uh, spin right uh, to the C drive. And I'm going to do the same thing um for the spin right pre-release uh, copy that over to the c drive also and so if we go over to our c drive we now have spin right and spin right pre-release this is the alpha 2 version on the c drive and we can run those i already have a newer style format gpt drive in the system uh, so I can launch Spinrite 6.0 and show you that that's one of the drives it does have problems with. Okay, so as Spinrite is launching, it discovers all our media. We're going to select the drive that we want to work with. And as you can see, it says this is not an MBR drive. So this is a, um, a newer type format it's a GPT uh, drive and the old Spinrite 6 couldn't handle those drives so let's go ahead and get back out of here and let's jump into Spinrite pre-release we'll launch that and the first thing it does is does its device discovery we see that it finds the Toshiba drive the one terabyte GPT drive we're gonna hit any key to continue we're gonna go forward and at this point we can select any drive we want, including the drive that old Sprintrite wouldn't let us work on. And at this point, we hit enter and it takes off and starts scanning the drive. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, kind of showed you how to get FreeDOS up and running, get your Spinrite, uh onto this drive and how to start uh, running that so you can do maintenance and repairs on your hard drives and SSDs. Uh, hopefully you found this uh, video helpful. Uh, leave any comments if I missed up on anything. I'm sure I missed something. Uh, this is not the only way to do this, but it's the way that I did it. And I'm sure somebody out there has a better way to do it. But uh, appreciate you watching and hopefully this was helpful. Thanks.